The French government will force controversial pension reforms through without a vote in Parliament after failing to convince a majority of MPs to back the bill. Let's look at the live pictures from Paris right now. Where protesters have gathered outside Parliament upon hearing the news. The changes will raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. President Emmanuel Macron says this is essential to cover pension deficits, but there's been widespread opposition to his plan. Millions of people have taken part in protests and marches and strikes across France. Natasha Butler has more on this from Paris. The day started with the French government hoping to put this uh, proposed pension reform bill to a vote, but they simply didn't uh, know whether they'd get enough support from some opposition MPs in order for this bill to pass. And as that was the case, they decided to push it through by decree. It's not a total surprise. It was a little bit in the air in the last few days. It was a course of action that the government uh, might have taken and have obviously decided to take. Now, nevertheless, it will be seen by many as a failure of politics, as a failure of President Macron to really convince people about a reform that has proved to be, let's face it, unpopular. Some two thirds of French people, up to three quarters sometimes in opinion polls, uh, say that they are against Against this reform because they see it as unfair, an erosion of social rights, an erosion of the French social model. And from Macron's point of view, he says, look, the pension reforms, uh, the pension system in France is complex, it is out of date, it costs too much money, it is not sustainable for future generations. That is why it needs to be modernised, he also says. People are living longer these days, therefore they can work longer, and it would bring the French pension system more into line with other countries in Western Europe. But people don't feel the same. You know, we've seen that on the streets over the past two months, the strikes and the protests. And we've been speaking uh, to protesters. There were some behind me. They've dispersed now. But they were saying they will continue with protests and strikes in the coming days because they're very angry, very upset that this bill has gone through. Axel Persson is General Secretary of the CGT Union for Railway Workers. He joins us from the Parisian suburb of Trap. He's live with us on the program. Um, thank you for joining us. What do you make of the government having to resort to what's known in France as the 49-3, which is the measure that allows them to bypass a vote in Parliament? What do you make of that? Well, it shows that not only does the government, do, it doesn't have a majority amongst the public opinion, amongst the working people, and it doesn't even have a majority in its own parliament, which really shows that no one except for the government and the employers wants this reform to be implemented, and it has no democratic legitimacy. We already knew that from different opinion polls and also from the discussions we had in all the workplaces. So this attack has no democratic legitimacy, and we will continue to fight it. And as such, the strike and the struggle will continue tomorrow, and we will try to convince all our fellow workers to pursue the strikes that have begun on the 7th of March. And we are determined not only to block the, 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 the bill to be enforced, but we will also continue the fight in order to defeat this government and force it to back down completely and maintain our current pensions as they exist. And of course, we will always be available for negotiations that aim to improve them, but not any negotiations that would uh, aim to destroy or deteriorate the conditions at which we retire or the um, amount of pension we get or so raising Axel. the retirement aid. So that's the greater spirit. So French governments I understand you are against bypassing the vote in Parliament, but French governments are allowed to do this. It is legal. So when you say you want to block it, how do you intend to do that? Well, as we did, uh, the last pension reform that they tried to implement was in 2019, actually. They tried it uh, four, uh, three years ago, I'm sorry. And uh, we went on strike for like 56 days. And eventually, actually, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Parliament actually voted it through, well, it didn't vote. They used the 49-3 article in the Constitution, which allows them to enforce it without a vote in Parliament. And eventually, they had to withdraw that bill that was never implemented. Uh, then COVID happened, the first lockdowns happened, and the government and the employers chose not to relaunch the legal procedure to enforce it anymore and chose to abandon it. We have loads of laws in French labor history that have been voted through, even sometimes uh, the decrees that uh, were necessary for them to be enforced had been published, but uh, the la organized labor managed to, uh, to defeat it. So you're saying so, um, essentially that you uh, want to harden the protest and the strike movement so that it raises the political cost for the president and he eventually throws in the towel? Is that what you're saying? Not only the political cost, but also the economical cost, because behind the government uh, is also 
uh, he's mm-hmm. acting on behalf of the interest of the employers and the big corporations. And uh, as such, we are therefore organizing strikes, which aim, of course, to raise the political cost for him, but also the economical cost to force the employers to call him and tell him to back off because basically by telling him this is not worth it, just, uh, just give up. So that's why we're on strike today. The supporters of President Macron, the people who voted for him, would probably tell you, well, they voted for him on this platform of reforming. And he did win the election, promising to reform pensions, amongst other things. Well, as you know, winning an election is uh, one thing, but it doesn't necessarily equate with representing the will of the majority, because for several reasons, for example, there are several people who are on strike today and who are demonstrating, who voted for Emmanuel Macron, for example, in the second round, not because they supported his uh, uh, his pension law, but because they, for example, wanted to not uh, be uh, pre- presided by the far right. And many of his voters voted not by choice, but more as a default, as a way to prevent the far right from uh, gaining power. And uh, I don't, and we don't really care what workers voted or not. The, uh, regardless of what we voted, uh, even if you voted for Macron, the far right, the far left, whatever, we will all be attacked and forced to work another additional two years if we don't manage to defeat it. And it is, it is in none of our interest. And all the opinion polls uh, show that uh, the support for our strike is very high. It's about 60% in the general population. But if we narrow it down to working people, 90%, 90, mm. 90% of, uh, our, of workers in France oppose this, uh, this attack and, uh, and the uh, experiences and, uh, as a brutal attack on their living standards and living conditions. Axel Persson, General Secretary of the CGT Union for Railway Workers. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you.